Imagine a plane that could fly for days without refueling or reach speeds that are impossible with today's technology. This is the promise of nuclear powered jet engines. But what about electric plasma engines? These new engines are powered by electricity and they have the potential to be even more efficient than nuclear engines. So, which technology is the future of air travel? Join us as we explore in this video the shocking difference between nuclear powered jet engines and electric plasma engines. We set out the differences and then draw the conclusions. Brace yourself and buckle up. Let's go. Welcome to the future of air travel. Nuclear powered jet engines and plasma electric jet engines are two technologies that have the potential to revolutionize aviation, but both have faced challenges that have kept them from being widely adopted. But that is about to change. Nuclear powered jet engines have been around for a while, but they have never really taken off until now. The main reason for this is that they're really expensive to develop and operate. Nuclear reactors are complex and dangerous machines and they need to be heavily shielded to protect the crew and the people on the ground from radiation. The Cold War era was truly insane. It was a time when new ideas were developed and one of them was the nuclear powered airplanes. The advantage? No refueling. The only tiny issue was the lethal radiation. No worries though, engineers had a brilliant plan which was to hire elderly Air Force crews who would kick the bucket before radiation got the best of them. Problem solved. We said age was just a number. Then Enrico Fermi came into the picture. This genius physicist launched the idea back in 1942 when he was making atomic bombs under Oppenheimer's direction for the benefit of the Manhattan Project. Fast forward to 1946 and the race to make nuclear flight a reality was on. Teams of mad scientists, strategists, and money counters worked tirelessly, fueled by blueprints, green bills, and a dash of sheer audacity. The perks of nuclear power were absolutely amazing. Now, the nuclear submarines didn't need to refuel and neither did the planes need to land anymore. The world was in the palm of their hands. Sadly, it was not that easy. Now, they had to encounter some major problems. Nuclear reactors on planes was a disaster waiting to happen. They could melt like a popsicle, sending a radioactive mess back to Earth. Also, shielding pilots from radiation? Now, that's a tough one. What? could have they chosen. Heavy shielding versus flight ready weight? But wait, maybe the weight saved on fuel could counterbalance it all. For 16 years they toiled but success didn't want anything to do with them. The Soviets joined the race but their propaganda couldn't mask the fact that uh, both countries were having a hard time wrapping their heads around this nuclear dead end. The 1950s saw the advent of intercontinental missiles. This meant no need for fancy nuclear planes when one-way missiles could do the job. But as the saying goes, desperate times call for elderly pilots. This is when the Air Force deployed elderly pilots. But even granny pilots couldn't save the day. The nuclear airplane's fate was sealed. John Fitzgerald Kennedy slammed the brakes in 1961 and the dreams of nuclear powered jets became just a fever dream. But what if these things could actually be developed? Setting aside all those disadvantages, it would be like rocket fuel on steroids. Forget those pit stops for refueling. These engines would pack the punch of a supernova. They tap into the atomic frenzy of nuclear fission, channeling the energy that keeps stars shining bright. With these bad boys, we'll soon be crossing oceans faster than a caffeinated cheetah on a jet ski. And the best part? They're going green. Cleaner skies, happier polar bears. What's not to like? But wait, is this where electric plasma jet engines come into the scene? Electric plasma engines are a newer technology, and they're still in the early stages of development but they have the potential to be even more efficient than nuclear powered jet engines. But how? Before we tell you that, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. This is because they don't have to waste energy heating up air and they can be operated at higher temperatures and pressures. Also, they're much safer than nuclear powered engines. They don't use flammable fuels and they are less likely to be affected by electromagnetic pulse or other forms of electromagnetic interference. Isn't that cool? Now picture a jet engine that needs no high voltage grids, no anodes or cathodes, just a sizzling electric arc between electrodes, which turns plasma into rocket fuel. We're talking quasi neutral exhaust here. Ions and electrons existing in equal numbers, making it easy peasy to extinguish the exhaust plume. Who needs an electron gun when you've got electron recombination skills? Now don't expect these engines to lift off like a rocket on earth because they're low thrust. But hey, in the vastness of space, there's no need for speed records. With patience and persistence, these babies can keep thrusting for months, even years, until they reach stellar velocities. Have you ever heard of the concept of Sky Hotel? What if you took a vacation in the sky to a flying hotel where you could do anything you wanted? 
Luxury dining out, to the theater, to the cinema, or to the pool with your friends, all while flying around the earth at an altitude of thousands of kilometers. And the best part, plasma thrusters are not picky eaters when it comes to propellants, from argon to carbon dioxide, and wait for it, even human urine. Yep, space travel is going green, folks. But hold on, just like nuclear-powered engines, even these guys have challenges ahead. Plasma thrusters are very power hungry. They require so much energy that they could even make a fission reactor blush. Also, be careful of plasma erosion. The hot plasma particles can damage the walls of the thruster. Also, these plasma thrusters are not so effective until they reach space. They're not as flashy as other rockets during launch, but they can make the travel time shorter. That's how powerful they are. Thanks to the variable specific impulse magnetoplasm rocket, Bessemer, we could zip from Earth to Saturn in just 14 months. Nowadays, it would take about 7 years to reach Saturn if you traveled there by rocket ship. Voyager 1, the fastest and farthest spacecraft from Earth, reached Saturn in 1980 after a journey of more than 9 years. So if 14 months isn't amazing, I don't know what is. In 2021, a new design of plasma jet engine was unveiled by a group of researchers in Wuhan University, China. It was a functional prototype of a microwave thruster that could revolutionize the future of aviation. Unlike traditional plasma engines that use noble gases and falter in the Earth's atmosphere due to friction, this cutting-edge design operated with air and electricity opening up thrilling possibilities for modern aircraft. Plasma engines, though excellent for space travel, face pesky problems on Earth like feeble thrust and impracticality and atmospheric friction. But these Wuhan researchers cracked the code. Their plasma engine ingeniously generates a low-temperature plasma from ionized air, similar to how combustion engines work. With an air compressor, the plasma is pumped into a tube. As the ionized air moves through the tube, it gets shaken up from the microwaves, which turns it into a powerhouse of impact. These tiny ions ping off non-ionized atoms, generating a fiery thrust. This process increased the temperature and pressure of the plasma, which then generated significant amounts of thrust further down the tube. Isn't that amazing? Recently, another amazing discovery was made in Japan by Professor Kuzunori Takahashi from Tohoku University. Takahashi just pulled off a major feat by cranking up the cosmic power of electroless plasma engines. In the world of propulsion, where efficiency is the name of the game, Pelican engines used to be stuck in the slow lane, struggling to reach 20% efficiency. But don't fear, our rocket genius had other plans. With his brilliant mind at work, he achieved a jaw-dropping 30% efficiency. That's like going from crawling to rocketing through space. Sure, 30% may not sound like a monumental leap, but in the realm of space engines, it's pretty much a big deal. Not every engine can boast such impressive results. And here's the cherry on top. Helicon engines outshone their electro counterparts with a much longer service life. Think of it as having a rocket that never wants to retire. So, why should you care? Well, listen up. Takahashi's breakthrough could be a game changer for space exploration with improved efficiency and engines that keep going and going. It's only a matter of time until we use electric plasma engines commercially. Now, the question that awaits us, which technology will be the future out of the two? To be honest, it's still too early to say which technology will ultimately be more successful. Nuclear-powered jet engines have the potential to revolutionize air travel, but they're very expensive and dangerous. On the other hand, electric plasma jet engines are safer and more efficient, but they're still being developed. We can say that the future might involve a combination of both technologies. But what about the environment? One of the biggest concerns about nuclear jet engines is their environmental impact. Nuclear reactors produce radioactive waste, and this waste would need to be disposed of safely. However, there are ways to reduce the environmental impact of nuclear-powered jet engines. For example, the waste could be recycled or reused. Electric plasma jet engines are also relatively clean technology. They don't produce any emissions, so they're good for the environment. However, they do require a lot of electricity to operate, which could come from renewable sources such as solar or wind power. Both of these technologies have a great potential to be the number one in the future. However, they also have some pretty big challenges to overcome. Which of these technologies do you think will rule air travel in the future? Can a combination of both these technologies likely be the best option? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to this channel now for more interesting content.